I do not wa fight against the scientists, but I think they should open their eyes and they should uh, research on some of our findings. I think they might find out many, many uh, strange things. Uh, all of you, you know the legends about giants and little people. I was invited in 2003 from uh, Professor Wayne Deloria, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. He was the f most famous uh, North American Indian. He took uh, rights against the, the government for his uh, indigenous people, and he was a great researcher. He invited me to a three days meeting with 15 elders of the big North American tribes, and the three days meeting was about giants and little people. Until this meeting, I had never any experience or data or facts about giants and little people. But after that meeting, it really started, and I was very much uh, shocked about some of the findings. You see here, uh, on your right side, a normal human man with about 180 centimeters, and next to him, you see skeletons where we found documents or stories or legions about giants. The one before the last one on the la left side is about uh, 7 meter 60. Uh, I got the information that uh, a father, Carlos Crespi, in the 1962, was called by people from Ecuador from a mountainside because a heavy storm brought down a part of a platform and they found a lot of destroyed uh, human, uh, I mean, uh, bones. And as they didn't know what kind of bones these are, they called Father Carlos, uh, Father Carlos Vaca, who was working in a hospital, and he recognized that these bones are from a human. But he also found out that this skeleton must have been the size of 7.6 meters. Here you see Professor J.J. Hurtak, an American researcher, in front of the big human uh, footstep in your own country. So that means giants also lived in South America. Uh, sorry, in South Africa. Here you can see a photo with some of the bones. Father Baca uh, recognized some of the bones and he described them. When I found the family, because he, was, he passed away just one month before I could find his uh, niece, uh, she allowed me to bring some of the bones with me to Vienna, and we had several researches in Vienna. Uh, this is a part of the skull, and it must be so old because some of the parts of this bone were already crystallized. This is one of the bones I brought with me, and it was identified by several scientists as a human heel bone. But uh, the professor of anatomy of the Vienna University, he checked the bones, and finally he said, I cannot believe it. It looks definitely 100% like a human uh, heel bone, but it is impossible because it is at least five times bigger. Next day, he visited me again and he brought some of the human bones, real human bones, with him and he compared it and definitely he said, still it's impossible for me, but these are definitely human bones. The skeleton was 7.6 meters in size. This is another side of the bone. Here you have a part of the nose bone, also five times bigger. And that's a so-called os occipitale under the skull bone, which makes us uh, able to turn the, the head. It's again five times bigger. We found old documents from a Spanish uh, historian. He was half Inca and half Spanish. Uh, he was writing in 1576, today we found several human skeletons at the coast of Esmeraldas in Ecuador, and they were all five times bigger than we were. At this time, a Spanish man had the size of about 150 centimeters. He was just a little bit smaller than me. 
In the Museum de las Culturas Aborigines in Cuenca, we found these eggs. The X is 70 centimeters in size, it's granite, very heavy. You can even see where some rope was around it and it was definitely used. In the museum, of course, it is mentioned as ceremonial X. And we did measurements with existing real st stone axes and the size of this one is again five times bigger. This is another big like this size, stone X, also in the same museum, and this is another one like this size. So that means uh, a 70 centimeter stone X wouldn't have been able to use for a normal human uh, to use it or to handle it. But for a man with a size of 7.5, 7.6 meters, it would have been definitely possible. When I had the exhibition Unsolved Mysteries in Switzerland, we did a model of a 7.6 meter skeleton, which you can see part of it here. <laughs> Yesterday I was talking about giants, little people, human with uh, elongated skulls, uh, human and dinosaurs. Today I show you many so-called O parts, O parts like uh, the uh, out of place artifacts, of course, I cannot give you any answers. Uh, a, few a few months ago, an American writer wrote a book about me, uh, and she made the subtitle, Digging for Answers, Getting More Questions, and this is the reality. Uh, on some of the artifacts we did uh, scientific researches, these results I can easily explain you and tell you, but uh, for many of the artifacts there is no an answer until now. Uh, a few years ago, when we tried to do the exhibition Unsolved Mysteries in Vienna, I, start, I studied uh, around, all, around the world, all the museums for strange artifacts, and finally we had a list of 356 pieces. A friend of mine, a museum director, wrote a landing request to all of his, to his colleagues. And out of these 356 uh, requests, we received only one agreement because museums, if they lend you some artifacts, they have to give you an explanation and most of those pieces were also quite impossible to give an answer. So today I start with uh, the age of human. On this photo you see the footstep, the positive and negative side of a footstep, human footstep, it looks like a shoe step, but uh, the scientists of course said immediately this is a natural formation, but the strange thing on this object is that you can see on the right side here, uh, here and here, you can see a crashed trilobite. This is an animal which concern the official scientists. Trilobites finally disappeared in the mass extension at the end of the Permian about 250 million years ago. And it's definitely that this uh, trilobite is crashed by a weight. So that's quite impossible that human cannot be 250 million years ago lived already. Here you have a better view so you can see the positive and the negative side and the crashed trilobite. This is a human footstep found in the Palaxi River in Texas. There are a lot of these footsteps parallel with uh, dinosaurs' footsteps. And of course, the official announcement was immediately this was done by the creationists because there is the Creation Evidence Museum allocated very close to the Balaxi River. So they took out one of these footsteps and they sliced it into, uh, they cut it into slices and you could see on the inside, sorry, you could see that warm holes in the stone also had the same form like the footsteps. So it was impossible a fraud or a fake. But as these footsteps were 
parallel with human footsteps, uh, with dinosaurs' footsteps, that wouldn't have been possible. Age dating also there around over 100 million years. This is a petrified human hand uh, print, also in a, uh, petrified, and uh, also the age dating should be over 50, 60 million years. So is it reality that we human only are until now over one million year old, or did human live already long, long time ago? This iron cup was found in the United States in a coal mine, and it was enclosed in a big uh, stone brick. And when they broke this piece of coal inside was this metal, this iron cup. And you can see that the pressure of the petrification of the coal uh, put some part of the coal directly into the iron and deformed it. The age dating of the coal in the area where it was found, geological uh, age, is 65 million years. This is a petrified human finger and they cut it also into pieces before they did some uh, x-rays and you could see that the inside where the bone is is much uh, stronger than the area where the meat was and you can see even the fingernail. These pieces are presented in uh, Glen Rose at the uh, Creation Evidence Museum. Here you see a monastery in Colombia. The Santo Ecce Homo Monastery was built 1620. The area in Villa de Leva, that's the place uh, called uh, Villa de Leva, is full with uh, fossils. The whole area you can find big fossils, small fossils, and the padres, the fathers, uh, used some of the fossils for the construction and from the, uh, for the floor of the monastery. On this picture you see a great researcher from Colombia, Professor Jaime Gutierrez. On this picture you see a petrified pineapple. Here you see an avocado. Here it's a bigger photo. This is a